When you imagine a monarch, you probably think of a man or a beautiful lady covered with jewels, sitting in a high armchair and wearing a gold crown, right? But can you imagine a baby in that position? Probably not, but this has happened throughout history. Some of the youngest people to become monarchs were less than a year old. Some were even crowned in the womb. But that doesn't mean that they started ruling at birth. Until they came of age, baby kings and queens were supported by a regent. This figure was legally entitled to rule until the minor monarch came of age and was often a mother, uncle, grandmother or grandfather. Sometimes these regents fulfilled their role, keeping the kingdom cohesive until the child assumed the throne. Other times, the regent was seduced by greed and power. Were all the young heirs to the throne always successful? Sadly, no. But there were remarkable monarchs who made such a strong impact on their kingdoms. They often managed to rule for long periods, leaving as their legacy a strong country and many descendants. Others did what they could during their short reigns. This list starts with Shah Shapur II, ruler of Persia, crowned while still in the womb. But how? Simple, they placed a crown on the belly of his mother, and thus he was appointed. Shah Shapur II of Persia was the longest running reigning monarch in Iranian history. Having assumed a throne while still in his mother's belly, he reigned for the 70 years he lived, from 309 to 379. He was born in a chaotic period, where his older brothers were victims of tragedies such as murder and blindness. Shah Shapur II became a great king of the Persian dynasty when he came of age. He managed to win some wars and expand Persian territory. He led an expedition in the Middle East to defeat the strong Arab forces. And, after the death of Constantine I, he returned to Armenia. He was known as a strong military leader, although he was considered a tyrant by the Roman forces. When he died in 379, Persia was in a stronger position, having still retained control of Armenia. Continuing the list, here is another monarch who assumed a throne while still in his mother's womb, King Alfonso XIII of Spain. He was crowned immediately after his birth on May the 17th, 1886. His mother was regent until he turned 16. Considered a beloved young king, Alfonso did some cool things for the country. During the first years of his rule, he remained neutral in World War I, being a safe haven for prisoners on both sides of the conflict. During his wedding ceremony, he and his wife survived an assassination attempt. It was the first of many as Spain moved toward a second phase as a republic. He also survived the Spanish flu, one of the greatest pandemics in history. Later, in February 1931, he was disposed from the throne by the Second Republic. He died in exile in 1941 in Rome. Third on this list is a queen well known to followers of this channel, Queen Mary Stuart. She assumed the throne six days after her birth. Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, was crowned at the age of six days in 1542. Because she was too young to assume the throne, several regents, including her mother, the French woman, Mary of Guise, ruled until she was an adult. At the age of five, she was promised in marriage to Henry VIII's son, Prince Edward of England. But Scotland did not approve of the engagement. Mary was protected in safe houses to avoid being taken away and forced into Henry VIII's much-anticipated marriage, as it would help him control Scotland. Instead, she was sent to France, where she was raised and educated. She became engaged to Prince Francis, son of French King Henry II and Catherine of Medici. Mary became Queen of France for a brief period. But her reign did not last long. Less than a year later, Francis II died and she was left a widow. Mary returned to Scotland in 1561. Although the Catholic country had undergone a Protestant Reformation, Mary ruled and nurtured a religiously tolerant atmosphere. She had six years of peaceful rule until she made political mistakes, among them a reckless marriage. She was imprisoned for 19 years in England, participated in several coup attempts against Queen Elizabeth I, and was eventually sentenced to death. Can you imagine a four-year-old baby receiving the title of king and holding it for the next 80 years? That's what happened to Sabusa II, an African ruler who achieved many positive changes for his people, among them becoming independent from Britain and helping to write a constitution for Swaziland. Sabusa II was loved by the people. He often attended festivities and rituals and was an adherent of traditional medicine. He was able to unite Swazi practices and traditions with rulership. 
Despite vague records, Sobusa is said to have had over 70 wives and about 210 children, and over 1,000 grandchildren. He also married into upper-class Swazi families, ensuring stronger bonds to keep his family and his country resilient. Taking the throne at just four months old and dying in 1982, he is the longest reigning monarch in history. But apart from the Regency period, he ruled between 1921 and 1982. Last on this list is Emperor Shunzhi, or Shunzhi in Mandarin, who took the throne at the age of only five. Shunzhi was a great ruler of the Manchurian Kingdom. He assumed the throne at the age of five in 1643. His paternal uncle was regent and captured Beijing, making Shunzhi the first Qing emperor to rule China between 1644 and 1661. Considered a gentle man, Emperor Shunzhi was often influenced by Buddhist priests and eunuch officials. A German Jesuit missionary, whom he called grandfather, was often his advisor. The Jesuit even had permission to build a Catholic church in Beijing. Shunzhi became particularly for increasing the amount of Chinese in the Manchu government. Unfortunately, Shunzhi died early at the age of 22.